You will never learn from people if we always tap dance around the truth. We tap dance around the truth by finding the right words so I don't hurt you because you have thin skin. No, tighten up people. It's okay. You might be called nigger one day. It's okay. You might be called some Jewish word or some faggot or gay word. It's okay. Let them call you that. What are you going to do now? They don't own your life. How are you going to control that now? How are you going to flip it upside down and say, Roger that, now I'm going to harness this shit and you'll read about me years from now? How? That's the question. How are you going to do that? Thicken your skin. Become more of a human being. Don't be afraid of the reflection in the mirror because that's all you can be afraid of. Once you overcome the reflection in the mirror, you've done it. If you're choosing to do something, you have two routes. You can go there and be a little weak person and get through barely, and that's your reputation. Or you can go through the hardest guy you can possibly be, and that's your reputation. So my whole thing is, if you're going to choose to open that fucking door in Iraq or Afghanistan, open the motherfucker and go in hard. Because they're going to remember you by slowly opening it and peeking in. So if you're going to open it, and you made the mind to open it, don't crack it open. Open the fucking door and go in. That's with life. If you're choosing to do something, attack it, because you can do it anyway. No matter what avenue I choose, I want to be the very best. And the very best may not be I'm number one. The very best is that I leave everything inside of me out there. So it's not like, oh, I want to win this or win that. I'm running against myself and everything I do. If you had that same kid, he wants to take that first step, you want him to go experience some life, what one specific thing would you tell him to go do? I'd first ask the kid, who are you? At the core of your soul. And if he can't answer that question, our conversation's over. Because I can't say shit to him. If you don't know who you are, I can't tell you who you are. I used to struggle with self-esteem and my thing was I focused on being smart and I just wasn't that smart. I focused on being right and I was wrong a lot. And so it created this weird thing in my life where I would constantly try to put myself around people who were less and less intelligent so that I could feel good about myself. And the bad news is it's actually a really good strategy for that. Right. Being around people that were less intelligent than me really did make me feel good. Like I felt good about myself. But I literally referred to myself at the time as the king of remedial jobs because those were the only jobs that I could really shine at. And it wasn't until I realized I can actually change what I build my self-esteem around. And I can start building my self-esteem around instead of being right or being smart, being a learner and being willing to admit when I'm wrong. And so the thing that I began to build my self-esteem around was being willing and able to stare at my inadequacies. Dude, I so believe in the notion of looking at yourself and if you are pathetic, owning it, right? Because my thing is you can change it, but if you don't admit it, you're never going to be on the path to changing it. I had to make a change in my life. You know, I was at an all-time low, and I wasn't going anywhere, and I was exactly what everybody said I was going to be, which was nothing. So I had to make a change. The problem with most people is that they're playing the world's most unrewarding game, and the name of the game is Follow the Follower. There's a story about a small town in which there was a jewelry store, and like all jewelry stores, he had a big clock in his window. And every morning for years, he'd noticed a working man stop, adjust his pocket watch to the same time as the clock in the window. He'd been doing this for many years, and one morning the jeweler was out in front sweeping a sidewalk, and so he asked the man, so tell me, why do you uh, adjust your watch to my big clock every morning? I've noticed you're doing that for years. The man said, well, I'm the foreman down at the big plant. He said, I want to make sure my watch is correct because I blow the quitting whistle every night at five o'clock. The jeweler looked at him rather strangely for a minute, and he said, well, that's funny. He said, I've been setting that big clock in the window by that quitting whistle all these years. A very logical thing but they could have been off six months. It was a case of a person just going along with what he thought to be correct without checking his references. So I want to suggest that from now on out, at least we do that, that we check our references and ask ourselves, are the people I'm following going where I want to go?